Jorge, I was really just blown away by the amount of talent you got for the voice cast. Were you even you a bit surprised that you were able to get all these great names? Uh, yeah, <laughs> honestly, the power of social media. I basically would write people on Instagram and Twitter, like DM them like a like a crazy fanboy. And we'd be like, hey, I wrote a role for you. Here's your character. You know, Queen Latifah, you got to do this. Uh, and, and people would write me back. So... I still can't believe we got that all-star. Team. I swear to God, yeah. You know, Sandra, this is such a you know interesting series. You get to tell this very Mesoamerican story. We get to see all these gods and goddesses. You know, how exciting was it to tell you know this great story and have so much culture involved? It was pretty cool. I mean, it was a little bit of a of a challenge because there's just so much. It's like a smorgasbord of culture, and you don't really want to insult anyone. So you, we kind of did a mishmash and like a, a nice little soup of all these like cultures that they so nice that they lend them yeah. their, 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 their um, you know, traditions and everything that we got from them. And hopefully, you know, people will love it. And, and we were, we tried to be as respectful as possible. It was great. It was just too much, just too much goodness. Well, and, and also referencing ancient cultures, but we also said, I want to reference ancient cultures of pop culture. So I reference yeah. uh, movies from the 80s, video games from the 90s, like literally Street Fighter, Akira, like it, that's basically what we do in Latin America. We yeah. take things from all over the world and we reinvent them. Yeah, plus we didn't want to make it 100% serious with, with that. We wanted to put a little bit with the pop culture we mixed in. That was the ingredient that made it a little more lighthearted, you know? This had to be so much research because you're dealing with multiple, you know, ancient civilizations here. And Jorge, what was the most interesting you learned while doing research for this? So I, I got really lucky. And when I was a kid, I, I got to go to the, uh, the, the Mesoamerica, the best Mesoamerica Museum in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got to travel a bunch. And so you fall in love with all these places and you're told this used to be this. But all you can do is imagine it because there's no traces. Right, of it anymore. for sure. So honestly, for me, it was all right. Now that I'm researching all this stuff, now that I'm looking into all these mythologies, unfortunately, I'm finding uh the female characters in the mythologies are sleeping princesses or the or the prize or the victim and so we said well with all due respect to mythology let's hack mythology yep. and let's create a, a warrior princess that reflects today and reflects the warrior women that at least i grew up with you know i married one so nice. why not <laughs> why not make something that resonates with what's happening in the world today while at the same time acknowledging, look at where we come from. Alexander, I was so impressed with just how much heart was in this series. And, you know, there's so much great action, but at the core of it, it's all about family. Can you speak to just the importance of that theme and how it all kind of circles back to that? I think so. I think at the heart of it, it's all about, uh, you know, the family. I, a lot of it was based on ours. We we have a trio. Technically, we're a very strong trio. It's Jorge, myself, and my son, Luca, who's on the autism spectrum. And um, a lot of that heart was taken from that interaction that we have here and injected into, into our project. Hopefully, it reads through. Yeah, and uh, Jorge, I love that, you know, this is a limited series rather than a movie because you had so much more time and we have full episodes flushing out the characters and so much time for the backstory. So what was the biggest advantage to just having that additional time? Well, I mean, I, I love movies that are giant movies and in animation, unfortunately, we're limited to 90 minutes. And if you know, you're, sure. you're a fancy director, you get an hour and a half or maybe two, and a, two hours. A fancy director? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but in live action, you get to do these three hour, four hour epics. So for me, this was the only way to tell that type of story in animation. And if you watch Lord of the Rings 2 and 3, you basically get cold opens in both of those. Yeah. So I said, that's what I want to do. I want to get basically shorts at the start of every episode where you get to tell all the backstories. And in the Book of Life, I must have cut an hour out of that movie to for get sure. it down to length. Yeah. So here... You know, I got to go into the buffet and eat as much as I wanted. And then the cool thing also is that you finish one, you can't binge. You have to like yeah. go to the next one and wait for the next one and wait for the next one. So, so it's, a, it's a burrito and we got a sushi chef to chop it up into nine, nine little rolls.